Hello YouTube and welcome to X-Ray Tech, giving you an inside look at PC hardware. The topic of today's video is something a couple of you have asked for specifically, which is a comparison between the Phenom 2 X6-1090T and the FX8350. We saw what the Phenom 2 X6-1090T could do in my previous video. For a short recap, this was the top of the line mainstream AMD CPU featuring 6 cores and released in April of 2010. After about a year and a half on the market, AMD pushed out a replacement, the FX series lineup. In October of 2011, the FX launched with the 8150 in its 8 cores and high clock speed leading the way forward for AMD. The chips were underwhelming, critically received both by reviewers and users alike. One year later, in October of 2012, an improved FX series was launched, and this optimized chip is what we're comparing to the old Phenom today. This comparison is from a website called User Benchmark. Pay attention to the graph of results under each CPU, and notice where the highest concentrations of samples tested fall. Obviously, a shift to the right will show a more powerful CPU in the websites included in free benchmarking utility. The FX8350's additional two cores helped it take the lead in this comparison. Next, I gave both CPUs a run through Maxon Cinebench R15's CPU test. This benchmarking utility provides a glimpse of a CPU's performance under ideal conditions in which all cores are utilized equally, and represents very linear scalability in relation to clock speed and number of cores and threads. While this doesn't have a ton of use or relatability to real-life use case scenarios, it does give a comparison that puts the two CPUs at the closest thing to a level playing field. Do note some stuttering as the 6 cores do their best to chug away at the workload. While I found this to be irregular, it was reproducible each pass through Cinebench with the Phenom, and it didn't seem to affect the output of a scalable score. Coming close to the end now, and here we see our final score of 604. Rolling into the Cinebench run for the FX CPU, we see all 8 cores chugging away at this workload. Note in the top left that I have the chip running at its stock 4GHz. The reason this chip is at its stock is I wanted to showcase a scenario in which a Phenom user has had his CPU for 2 years, he's overclocked it, and he's running it at about 4.1 GHz just like we are under a beefy stock cooler, but is now eyeing this new hotness, the, these new FX CPUs, and one day this user goes and buys an FX8350 and doing nothing else, pops it in to see what kind of product he's bought. Is it better than his Phenom? Is it worse? That's what we should be finding out today. If you want an idea of overclock performance, a typical result is around 4.7 to 5 GHz and would represent an addition of about 10 to 15% to the scores achieved in this video. Nearing the end, we see that we've achieved a score of 628 points in Cinebench. Moving on, we're going to talk about the systems used to run our tests for comparison. The Phenom is shown here in the NZXT S340 white case. Keeping the Phenom cool at its 4.1 GHz overclock is the Noctua D15, and the entire system is kept fed with plenty of juice by a beefy Intermax Triathlor Eco 1000 watt power supply. This system comes equipped with HyperX Fury DDR3-1600 RAM in two 8GB sticks. The FX8350 base rig is wrapped in another NZXT case called the Gamma, released in 2009. Maybe the Phenom should have been in this one instead for a period correct theme? The CPU is cooled by the same Cryorig H7 that I first attempted to use to cool the Phenom and ultimately failed. It proved more than enough to tame the stock 8350. Paired with the CPU are two 8GB sticks of Crucial Ballistics DDR3-1600 memory, and power is supplied by a Corsair TX750. Now, I actually didn't realize that this case was from all the way back in 2009 before this video, but goes to show what kind of staying power a good case can have. The graphics card used in both rigs is an EVGA GTX 980 Ti that I picked up back in 2016 as the third graphics card upgrade for my personal rig. For the purposes of this test, I wanted a card powerful enough that both CPUs would be able to reach their full potential without concern for a bottleneck, and at 1080p resolution this card has power to spare. Wrapping up the specs for our test systems, both rigs ran games and benchmarking software for my trusty 2TB Firecuda SSHDD. Now, without any further ado, the part you've been waiting for, the games. 
Overwatch, as always, is our first title. With settings on the low preset shifting the load primarily to the CPU, the results were impressive. This game, above all others, seemed to take the best advantage of the FX chip's additional two cores. While the Phenom returned an average of 107 FPS with a 1% low of 72, the FX chip gave us a whopping 143 with lows of 93 for a 33% average increase in performance. Next up is Star Wars Battlefront 2 Galactic Assault at the low preset. With an average taken across 6 matches on 6 different maps, we see that the Phenom was still able to achieve an average of 100 FPS with a 1% low of 62. The FX in turn gave us an average of 124 with lows dipping down to 80. Some very easy math puts this at a 24% increase in performance in this title, which again seemed to make good use of those extra cores. A new addition to our game's lineup that has been requested is Fortnite. Fortnite seems to play really well with low-end hardware, so much so that I had to bump the settings up to medium preset to place enough demand on the CPUs that it could lag behind the graphics card and place our system bottleneck at the correct place. Fortnite with the Phenom played at an average of 100 FPS and a 1% low of 59 FPS, and the FX8350 played at an average of 97 with lows at 65. The small difference between their averages is something I would chalk up to margin of error, and in my eyes these CPUs are effectively tied, which tells us something about Fortnite, that it doesn't make very effective use of more than at least 6 cores, which means the 8 core FX is on a level playing field with the Phenom, However, do note that the FX gave better 1% low values, which is going to represent a slightly smoother experience all around as the dips aren't quite as low. Transitioning on, we take a look at 2016's Doom. On the low preset and playing the beginning combat sequence of the UAC for consistency, we captured an average of 97 frames per second and 1% lows of 69, while the FX CPU showed a decidedly stronger 113 FPS average with lows at 72. This places our performance increase at around 16% for this particular title. These days, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds development team seem to have taken note of the game's formerly impressive disregard for low-end or budget hardware, and a series of recent patches have made the game far more accessible to those of us not running an i7-powered battleship as a PC. The Phenom spat out an average of 85 FPS with a 1% low value of 47, and the FX chip sat at 104 FPS with lows at 53. While both experiences were smooth, the FX does see a 22% jump in performance over its predecessor. Testing was again done at the low preset to place the load squarely on the CPU. The Witcher 3 was played at low, but I had to tweak some settings to coerce the CPU into running at a higher utilization than the graphics card, as this was a very graphically demanding game. Turning shadows and background characters to max, I was able to create a scenario in which the CPU was doing more work than the graphics card, and I then proceeded to run around the starting town of White Orchid during the day to produce a fairly even result for each CPU. The 6-core Phenom chugged out an average of 69 FPS with lows at 53, and in comparison the FX showed us 93 and 62 average and 1% low respectively, a 34% increase in performance. Bear with me guys, only a couple more titles left. The next to last title in this video is Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands, which in my experience is heavily reliant on CPU horsepower like a lot of open world games. Uh, at the low preset, the aging phenom turned out a 58 FPS average with 1% lows at 41, and was outdone by 17% with the FX achieving a 68 FPS average and lows at 52. So we're down to our last title, and it is Warhammer Vermintide 2. This title gave our Phenom trouble in the past with its large hordes of swarming enemies requiring a fair amount of CPU horsepower to run, especially in the multiple mob rush sequences thrown at you as part of the normal course of a level. Frames would slow to around 30 to 40 during these events with the Phenom, and the results for this comparison were no different. An average of 56 was achieved here, with 1% lows at 35 FPS. The FX delivered a very different experience, and averages soared to 74 with the 1% lows resting comfortably at 49 FPS. This does show an example where not only does the FX take the lead by 32%,
but it produces a playable experience in which frame lag doesn't render you useless to your team when it all hits the fan, whereas the Phenom does not. And on that note, we wrap up our gaming benchmarks. In the end, it seems to me that the answer is obvious as to which CPU is the better of the two. The FX 8350 takes home the trophy in this one. While the FX series CPUs got a lot of bad press at their launch, they were superior to the Phenom chips. If you're out on the market and you get the choice between one or the other at the same price point, get the 8-core FX chip. And I hope you enjoyed this video and that this information helps expand your knowledge whether you're buying, selling, or just plain curious. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below and feel free to like, dislike, subscribe, and share. Also, if you could, let me know how you feel about adding the percent values of increased performance in each game. Thank you all again for watching another episode of X-Ray Tech.